I'd always stayed out of trouble. In my earliest days, I followed the rules. I mean, I was the kid who wouldn't miss a day of school. From third grade through my senior year of high school, didn't miss a day. And they gave me a plaque when I graduated my senior year. They said, perfect attendance. The National Honor Society kid. Uh, and I went to college as a resident assistant. And even as an adult, I'd follow the rules. So if I went into the grocery store, 50 minimum or less line, I'd count my items first. If I had too many, I'd put a few back or get in another line. My lone encounter with law enforcement, a single ticket on the street I grew up on. I got a ticket for not stopping far enough in front of a stop sign while I was on my way to the church to give blood. <laughs> and as for lying, I didn't even know how to go about it. I was no good at lying for the same reason I was no good at ballet. I just never did it. <laughs> so, some years ago, I was living in a comfortable, quiet, Maryland suburb of D.C. It's an August day, it's been a humid August day. But that night, things had cooled off, and I was just going to go out to the mailbox and mail some letters. I stepped outside, and I thought it was really pleasant out. So once I put the letters in the mailbox, I decided, you know what, I'll just keep on walking. It was a gentle breeze. I was a single guy. I didn't have to go and tell anyone where I was going. I could just walk down these back streets and under the stars. And the temperature was just so right. It was, it was a perfect night. So I'm just walking down these back streets. About 20 minutes later, there's a car coming up behind me. The headlights going very slow. Looks like it's about to park. And then it does. The headlights stay on. Which seems a little odd, but I didn't think too much of it. I keep walking. And then I hear this voice. Turn around and put your hands over your head. I said over your head. <laughs> it's a police car. And a policeman is approaching. <laughs> <laughs> he gets behind me, and he's frisking me. He's giving me the full pat down. And the whole time he's doing this, I'm thinking, what are you doing? It's me. I'm the kid with perfect attendance. And I'm thinking at any point he's going to stop. And he's say, ah, it's just messing with you. Look in the camera over there. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Instead, he completes the pat down. He gets over. He looks at me up and down. He says, can I see your driver's license? But now he's just patting me down. And all I've got on me are my keys. I want to say, where do you think I keep my wallet? But I don't say anything. My smarter brain is saying, no, 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 no. You're not in a good place here. Just cooperate. So I tried to explain. I said, I, I, I don't have my wallet. I just walked out of the house without it. I said, so what are you doing out here? So I tell my story. Well, I went out to mail some letters, and the nice really nice, and I'm walking down back streets, and while I'm telling us, I'm thinking, this sounds really lame. <laughs> I should tell a lie. I should come up with something that'll sound better, such as, uh, I was out to see a friend, uh, but they could, they could find a witness on that or something. Or, uh, my dog Buster is, is out, and I'm looking for him. He's brown, one of those brown dogs. <laughs> no, no, this is not the time to start lying. The problem is, I'm telling the truth, and it sounds made up. So he gets a call, and we're standing in sort of in the headlights of this police car, and he keeps an eye on me. He gets this call on this that big walkie-talkie communication device, the guy is talking on the phone, and while he's on there, my mind is just racing now, thinking, what if I get arrested? I assume they'll tell me what for. And then, I know I get that one call, but I don't even have a lawyer. I have parents. <laughs> That would be an awkward conversation. Uh, yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in jail. Um, I'm sure things will straighten out. Uh, maybe you could FedEx my perfect attendance plaque down to the police station. <laughs> it might help to clear me. And then after you use my one call, I'm thinking, well, who calls the boss? He's going to say, yeah, Peter's not going to be there for an indefinite amount of time. Uh, and then what are they going to think at work? Because they don't know me that well. I don't know anything about my past. I'm just thinking they're all going to be saying, I thought there was something about that. <laughs> it's the quiet ones you have to watch. <laughs> so he gets off the phone and he approaches me. The policeman gets behind me and he grabs my neck and starts turning me. 
And now I'm completely confused. I'm thinking this is what happens to hard criminals. I don't understand this at all. And then he steps away. He says, okay, if somebody running around here has stabbed somebody and you fit the description, but they confirm he's got a tattoo in the back of his neck. So you're clear. What? <laughs> yeah, this guy ran and stabbed somebody. So uh, this is what I need you to do. And so, we do it. so he's talking at this point. I'm not hearing anything other than this. There's somebody running around who just stabbed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he kind of notices and says, hey, listen up, okay? You see this guy, you give us a call, right? <laughs> He's about your height, got that shirt. Well, he looks like you. Okay. I see my double, I call the police. My exhilaration at not getting arrested lasted seconds. Because after that, I realized I'm in a much worse predicament. I'm far from home, after dark. There's somebody running around here to stab somebody. And all I've got on me are my keys. So I said to him, listen, even if I see this guy, I've got no way of calling you or anyone else. And second, based on what you've told me, and then I said something I never thought I'd hear myself say, officer, I'd like you to take me home. <laughs> I said, no, 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 I can't do that. I, I gotta stay out here and look for this guy. I said, okay, but as long as you're there, I'm just staying here, because I got no reason to go anywhere. <laughs> so he kind of looks at me and says, all right, hold on. He goes away and gets back on his massive communication device. He's talking to whoever. And I'm looking around. And right then, it's the only time in my life I ever wanted to see my double. I can show up right now, right now. You get arrested, we all go home happy. <laughs> he gets off the phone, and whatever, and he says, all right, you can get in the car. Kind of right up front. <laughs> yeah, 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 come on. So I get in the police car and I get him directions home and I'm feeling good at that point. And uh, he looks over at me and says, hey, sorry about the neck thing, you know, I get cleared and I touch him. I'm I'm feeling good, I'm hoping I could see somebody that knows me, I'm sitting up here in front of the police car, and I'm on the beat. As I say, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not getting arrested, I'm not going to die, it's a perfect night. So he pulls into my driveway turns to me and he says, I'm just glad I have to use my gun on you. <laughs> I said, well, that makes two of us. <laughs> so since that time, I still count my items when I go to the checkout line to make sure I've got 15 or less. I still got my one traffic violation, not stopping far enough in front of the stop sign. But I do take my wallet with me everywhere. I've always got ID. And I'll admit that I do tense up a little bit if I'm walking along with the star pump. What else? Oh yes, I'm still tattoo free. <laughs>